sent through a cord. Beautiful. We only make that mistake once. Yeah, only once. <laughs> I always forget. I even write myself notes and I still forget. And I'm going to start our broadcast. Oh, before I do, actually, one thing I forgot to mention, um, Craig, Bob, and then Danny, um, the, the audience is a little bit delayed in um, what they hear. So mostly for you, Danny, when you tee up either Craig or Bob to speak, there may be a little bit of a lag. Um, it's not that they probably didn't hear you. It's the fact that they haven't heard you yet. Um, so we'll just wait for that. Okay. And same thing with like the Q&A okay. portion. You'll bring them. Yeah, they're already in, so they're okay. ready to go. So, so okay. I'll yeah. Just, so just tell them. That, yep. Yeah. Okay. So Craig and Bob, when when all you have to do when Danny um, tees you up is just to uh, uh, make sure you're unmuted. Okay. So you and can, you can start I'm not unmuted. Am I correct? You both are unmuted at this point. Yes. I'm on mute now. Yeah. You you guys both are not muted right now, which is fine. You can stay that way if you like. So um, do you do you unmute me? I can if you want me to, but you're okay. not muted now. Okay, got it. Only All speak right. when spoken to. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'll start this, and then we'll we'll get started. All right, good morning. Welcome to our virtual education program uh, today. I, I think we're gonna have a, a great session uh, for all of you today. I, I, we were talking a little bit before we got started here um, with the with with the broadcast in, in general. It, it's kind of been our experience that uh, when, when we talk about golf instruction and instruction programs, we usually have a pretty good audience. And, and it's been my experience, at least great instructors are always uh, open to, to, to new ideas and, and learning from one another. And uh, so we have um, what I think is going to be a great program here. Uh, Danny Edwards has, has certainly uh, led, um, it's, it's probably not a stretch to say, kind of a fascinating life here uh, from uh, self-taught in, into the game of golf to uh, being an All-American Oklahoma State, winning five times on the PGA Tour uh, in his spare time, racing cars uh, and, and doing that for uh, for a hobby and, and uh and then uh, kind of moving into uh, instruction and, and what he has here uh, with the chipping equation and what he's going to share uh, with all of you today. And, 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 and mainly, you know, from Danny's uh, standpoint and, and why he had reached out to us is uh, really kind of the remarkable success uh, that he's seeing with his students uh, and not only uh, the students that, he, that he's uh, teaching individually, but in, as you'll hear uh, with, with a local golf team as well. So, uh, really having some great success. He uh, does a lot of clinics at uh, some local facilities here in Palm Beach County, certainly available if, uh, if, if you want to do some guest instruction programs, uh, which I know many of you do. He, he's talked to a few of our facilities. So uh, I think you'll enjoy today. Uh, make sure at, at the end uh, or really at any point, if you have questions, put those in the, uh, the Q&A in the chat box and, and we'll make sure that we get uh, those addressed. Uh, by Danny. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to step aside and uh, let Danny take it from here. Thanks for uh, being with us and enjoy the program today. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to, to do this and appreciate uh, you guys and ladies that uh, have taken the time. I know you're very busy and I've got a lot to do. Uh, I'm going to share with you something today that I believe is very unique and uh, and very much leading edge. I've been around this game uh, at really the highest level for uh, a lot more than I'd like to admit, but probably about 50 years now. So I've seen pretty much uh, everything that has come down the pike. Uh, and when I, when I played on the tour those years, I got to play with so many different amateurs and I always agonized over their inability to chip. And I would ask them about their chipping and how do you play this shot? And it was kind of deer in the headlights. And, and uh, so I, I reasoned that uh, there had to be a better way to help these people because 
you know, they're just not going to go from hitting three or four greens in regulation to, to hitting eight or 10 uh, or, or driving the ball another 20 or 30 yards. It's so hard. This game is a tough game. So uh, I began to study it and, and do some research. And so I want to share with you here to start uh, what happened about three years ago in Lake Placid, New York. I was doing some teaching up there. And uh, I got to the golf course one morning and a fellow came walking up to me and with an accent. He said, uh, are you Danny? And I said, yes. And he said, my name is Ronnie. He says, I'm from Denmark. He said, I am a PGA teaching professional in Denmark. And he said, I see your poster here for your chipping equation. I've signed up. Uh, I want you to teach me how to chip. I can drive the ball beautifully and I can putt beautifully, but I cannot chip. I said, well, Ronnie, uh, I think you've come to the right place. Uh, let's get the other people and we'll head out to the range. So an hour and a half later, Ronnie uh, and I looked at, to, uh, looked at each other and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, Danny, this is unbelievable. This is what I've always wanted to find, a simple system to be able to accurately calculate a proper landing spot for the ball and a predictable rollout so the ball would finish close to the hole close enough, two, three, four, five feet, where the players can make a high percentage of those putts. So I was obviously very happy and, and we started to keep in touch. And about uh, three, four months later, uh, I remembered that Ronnie had told me he was one of the three original calibrators of the TrackMan system in Denmark. And so I, we got in touch and I said, Ronnie, um, did TrackMan ever do any analysis of chipping? And he said, no, we didn't. And I said, well, would you consider doing a test uh, on chipping? He said, absolutely, we'd love to do it. So I commissioned the first ever TrackMan analysis in chipping about three years ago. TrackMan in a morning chipped 300 balls with everything from an eight iron to a 62 degree lob wedge. And the final statement of analysis was, and I quote, with swing speeds below 30 miles an hour and lofts above 45 degrees, the ball starts rolling up the face, hitting across the face, compromising spin rate, launch angle, and quality of strike. Aha, lob wedges are inconsistent, flawed, maybe you could use the word for slow swing speed shots around the greens. And as I thought back over the years playing on the tour and playing with all these amateurs, I saw that happen all the time. And even sometimes uh, on television, you know, we don't see the guys and the gals that are missing the cut. We only see those, those guys and gals that are playing very well that week. But be sure there's some people packing up their bags that I believe were playing those lofted shots around the greens not very successfully. So, uh, with that TrackMan analysis, I believe that there was a better way to play shots around the greens. When, when your players and your members have a shot with a clear path to the hole, the unquestionable highest percentage way to play that shot is on the ground with a formula for carry and rollout so that that ball will finish close to the hole. Remember, the golf ball doesn't know the topography or the terrain we are asking it to traverse. It only knows one thing, and that is the amount of energy that we put to it. So if we can calculate a proper landing spot, an accurate landing spot, that energy then that we put to the ball by landing on that spot will propel it right toward the target. And it doesn't know if it's uphill or downhill or a false front or a plateau at the back of the green. It just goes where the energy sends it to go. What I'd like to do is, is to uh, have a couple gentlemen that uh, have uh, been around the chipping equation for a while. Uh, Craig Watson is the uh, head golf, uh, is a PGA professional and the head coach of the men's and ladies golf team at Palm Beach Atlantic University. Uh, Craig called me a few months ago and asked if I would come out and, and speak to his team, the ladies and the men's group, and encourage them. And, Tell them a little bit about the chipping equation, which I did. So, Craig, would you uh, just share a little bit of, of what your experience and the team's experience has been with the chipping equation these last few months? 
Hi, Danny. Yeah, there's there's two things that stand out uh, besides how the chipping equation made sense to me. And we had for quite a while, always with my assistant coach, Earl Puckett, always had a difficult time getting that 60 degree wedge out of their hands when they clearly had a simpler and a uh, higher prior, um, a higher chance of being successful with a less lofted club. Um, what, what Danny and the chipping equation was able to help us with was it created a framework that the pupils actually could believe in. Uh, it was a framework around a technique that we were already attempting to share with, in this case, teenage golfers. And everyone knows how golf has become such a specialized sport. Even average players have multiple coaches now uh, sharing information with them. Uh, but they quickly bought into this. Um, and the amazing thing to us was how quickly the players introduced it into their competitive play because they saw results right away. It wasn't like they were going to have to learn something and go home over the summer and test it before they would put it into competition. It went in immediately. They became immediate believers to the point where they would run up in between holes and say, coach, chipping equation, nailed it. And it was really exciting to watch it happen and how quickly it happened. So uh, we are believers in it. Um, it's one of the options that they have now to determine a strategy and commit to that strategy uh, with a little rehearsal and execution and then a reinforcement of the selection of type shot, uh, the selection of club and shot type that turned out positively and gave them an opportunity to save a par or just save a stroke. Great, thanks, Craig. Thank you very much. That's terrific. Um, second gentleman that I'd like to to uh, have a visit with you uh, briefly is a, a longtime friend. Uh, we met in uh, Lake Placid, and uh, I remember he was sick and he was down chipping, and he had a uh, had several hip surgeries. He was hobbling around on a cane, and and I walked by him and uh, saw him chipping, and uh, the rest uh, he could tell you about. So, Bob, uh, share what uh, what happened that day. Okay, Danny, thank you so much, uh, everyone. My name is Bob Modulewski. Uh, I live in Lake Placid, New York, and uh, four months of the year, and right across Alligator Alley from most of you in Naples, where I stay at Treviso Bay here. And my relationship with uh, Danny goes back probably about 10 years ago uh, when uh, there was a senior uh, event uh, competition at uh, one of the courses in Lake Placid that I helped sponsor. And from the day that I met Danny, he and I just hit it off and have developed the most unbelievable, cherished relationship, Danny. So I thank you. So Danny alluded to the fact that uh, I was sick and not feeling good. Well, what happened was uh, I had gone through my fifth hip replacement, survived, and I just couldn't wait to get to the golf course and, you know, start out certainly by chipping and uh, starting to practice again. And Danny walks by me that day, came right over to me, uh, complimenting me. It's so good to see you back on the golf course. And kind of looked at me a little bit and he, you know, Danny said to me, Bob, we, we, we play golf 20 or 30 times every summer. And there's one thing that I would like to ask you as a part of your golf game. And I said, sure. He said, uh, I think that you're chipping that you could with practice and believing in a system, if it would reduce two to three shots, almost every round of golf would you be open-minded to my chipping equation he said before that he said i want to know what do you what are you thinking about when you're chipping and everyone i was i i i really didn't know how, how to answer that and was quite embarrassed and i said well i guess i'm just thinking about feel here and he nodded his head and he said i i thought so 
He said, what I would like to teach you is my chipping equation that I have used for all of my professional life. And if you uh, practice this, I know that you will reduce two to three shots almost every round of golf. Are you open-minded? Well, I wasn't going to say hello, uh, no to Danny Edwards, I'll tell you that. So from that day forward, I bought into Danny's chipping equation. I may even have been the very, very first student uh, that was on board with Danny. And to this day, my every afternoon over here at Treviso Bay, the last half hour of my practice is always a half hour dedicated to Danny's chipping equation. Uh, I am dedicated to this. I practice it. I get it. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I'm somewhere around the five or six handicap, and uh, it just helped me so much. And moving beyond me, I'm sure almost everyone or everyone did watch the recent Masters, and that last round of golf, if we take one thing of his victory was his chipping. And so with that being said, uh, to the director, the administrative staff, all of the P PGA professionals, and Coach Watson that are on this call today, I'm really the one that's blessed to be on the call with all of you. So I hope some things that I brought up, you know, are something that you'll all be able to take back to your, your, uh, your teaching uh, to your students. And Danny, I thank you again for all the time that you've spent with me. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Bob is pretty modest. Um, if you watched Bob swing because of his surgeries, you would, you would say he probably couldn't hit a golf ball 200 yards. And <laughs> you know, Bob, that, that's not a negative, Bob. Come on. Uh, you would you would think he would have a very difficult time breaking 80. Bob shoots uh, even par, one or two over par all the time. He is legendary uh, at Treviso Bay and at Lake Placid. He gets balls up and down from everywhere, and everybody up there knows it. So so he's being pretty modest. But thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Thank so, you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the chipping equation is a simple system that allows a golfer to come up to their ball, step off the distance, either from the hole parallel so they're not stepping in anybody's line, and get a number for the distance in steps. And it doesn't make any difference if the lady's steps are a little shorter. It's, it's all, it all works out in the formula. So you, you step off the distance, you immediately know which club of the two clubs to use. Uh, because of the distance, and then you quickly calculate the basic landing spot for that chip. And the numbers are based on a 10 to 11 stint green flat surface landing on the green with the first bounce. So that's the basic baseline of the chipping equation. And from there, then we look at uh, are we landing the ball on the green with the first bounce and roll, which we would always like to land it on the green because we got the, the best bounce and roll, the most consistent. But that obviously doesn't always happen. Then if we don't have that perfect situation, if we are uphill or downhill or there's a plateau where the pin is cut, we quickly can make a modification to that landing spot to allow for whatever the ball needs to do to get to that spot. Uh, for example, let's say we have a, a chip shot where we're 18 paces or 18 yards off the green uh, or off the pin, uh, but the, it's a short side situation. So we have six steps on the green and we have 12 steps back to our ball and we're in light rough. That is a typical short side situation that gives 90% of our golfers uh, big trouble because they go with the lob wedge, they catch it a little thin and knock it over the green, they catch it 
not solid. The ball skids up the face and doesn't go very far, only six or seven steps. Now they got the same shot almost over again, and they're staring a double bogey right in the face. With the chipping equation, we make an adjustment. We learn to adjust a, our spot based on the topography. And it's very simple. If it's light rough, you know, it's going to slow the ball down a certain amount. You can make an adjustment to your spot. Uh, so it's very quickly that you can make that calculation. Again, the golf ball doesn't know the terrain or the topography you're asking it to traverse. It only knows the energy that you put to it. So as you move the spot, your landing spot, either forward or back, that takes care of the energy to get the ball to traverse through that light rough uh, and onto the, onto the putting surface. Uh, there are so many shots I could tell you, but it's it's just amazing. And people hit the shots in in practice when I when I teach it. We hit these shots, and they look back at me and they just shake their head. It's unbelievable. Um, it's really interesting when you think about other games and our game, how hard our games uh, our game is, and how many parts to it there are. But I have a friend who was a professional bowler, who actually is a PGA member as well. And we were talking a, a couple of weeks ago, and I told, I said, Bobby, wh wh what do you guys that bowl professionally aim at? Do you aim at the inside of the of the head pin, or do you aim in between the head pin and the first pin? He said, Danny, we don't even look at the pins. I said, what? He said, we don't even look at the pins. We look at the little diamonds in the lane. I said, what do you mean? Well, he said, there are seven diamonds on the bowling lane, one in the middle and then three on each side. And I said, well, how far are they away? And he said, they're five steps. So I said, you don't even look at the pins? He said, no, we look at the, we look at the, the diamonds and we either catch on the right side, depending on the wood, whether the ball hooks a little bit more or not. So they don't even look at the pins. Imagine if you could change your player's viewpoint of a shot that's 50, 60, 70 degrees, 70 feet or 80 feet away to the hole, if you could change that instead of being so long to a chip that's four or five or six paces right in front of them. The beauty of the chipping equation is that if you catch the ball any place on the face of the club, it's going horizontally toward that spot. And it then goes and rolls and ends up even a missed shot will roll up sometimes 10 or 15 feet from the hole. So it's not a disaster, which is what you have with a missed shot with those lofted wedges. You know, it was really interesting. Uh, early in my career, I had an agent in California right after I got out of Oklahoma State. And uh, the third year I went to Japan, my agent called and said, I've got a young man uh, that's going to go with you. I want you to keep him uh, under your wing, I got you in the same hotel, you know, go out to dinner with him. I said, sure, I sure I will. I said, who, who is it? He said, well, he's a he's a kid from, from Spain named Severiano Ballesteros. And I said, well, that's fine. I'll I'll, uh, I'll watch out for him and, and play some practice rounds. So over the next few years, I got to, to be fairly friendly with Seve. He was a he was a tough kid, as you as you all know. And uh, one one year at Augusta after the Masters, we were, after the practice rounds, we were on the range, and I, and I walked over and I said, Seve, tell me the secret to your chipping. And he looked over his right shoulder and he looked over his left shoulder to see if anybody was around and looked back at me and he said, Danny, you have to find the spot. And I thought to myself, you have to find the spot. So he is finding the spot that is the right place for him to land the ball. And I never forgot that. And I think that's a key element of the chipping equation to make shots easier for people to have a spot that's, that's very close to them where they uh, have, a, uh, have a short distance and a simple motion. So it's a simple setup, but very effective. And then the, the, uh, the formulas. Um, uh, that's really all there is to it. Uh, I have a lady, uh, I was telling Jackie here, that is a professional. She's trying to get on the Symmetra tour. She sent me a text the other night. She's had two sessions. And this goes to what uh, Craig was saying about how quickly people pick this up. 
she said, Danny, I was 100% up and downs yesterday. I had a great round. I was 100% up and down. I'm so happy. You know, thank you, thank you, and this. Um, so what I would like to do with, with your support is bring this system to your club or to your golf course uh, and do some uh, sessions with your members and your juniors. Think about this. Your youngsters uh, that love the game are, are trying to improve and you have people at your club and your courses that want to pursue the game. They, they want to try to compete. Imagine if they have a, 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 an advantage uh, with the chipping equation. They have an advantage over their competition if they're able to have a, a chipping system that is very, very accurate and simple for them to do. So that's what I'd like to do and uh, with your permission and uh, work with your members. So uh, that's really the story of the chipping equation. It's simple, it's incredibly accurate, it's easy for people to pick up quickly uh, and it works. And uh, I'd love to work with you to bring this program to your club and your courses as a, as a value added to your membership. I'd be happy to field any questions that, uh, that you have, uh, most any questions that you have as best I can. Uh, so we'll open the floor to those. I will say one other thing real quickly that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I sat down a couple of years ago at COVID and decided to write a book. My buddies on the tour had said, hey, Danny, you got to write a book. You've done all this stuff, racing cars and building a few little businesses. And uh, so uh, I wrote a book called Driven, the Danny Edwards story. It's, it's really chock full of stories of the tour life and my racing and whatnot. And uh, so I'm excited to, to have it available for folks. It's a uh, I show you it's called uh, it's called Driven, uh, the Danny Edwards story, and uh, it'll be on Amazon. You know, one of the things I'd like to do though is I I would like to come to your club and do a do a chipping equation seminar, uh, study a uh, 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 teaching session, and uh, do a book signing. Uh, I've done some of those; they're really a lot of fun. I get to meet the people and sign a book for them, and all. It's really cool. Uh, I'd love to do that too. So. That's a, that's I've got a, a couple questions to come okay. in, Danny. Um, the first is you mentioned two clubs, obviously, in the chipping equation. Which ones are those? Okay. Well, um, I use an eight and a, and a pitching wedge. And I think, as I said, there was uh, more spin rate on an eight than on a lob wedge, according to the TrackMan session. But uh, those are the two clubs. And uh, the two simp there are two simple formulas. I, I probably won't tell you those because I don't get want to give you everything here. But uh, those two clubs are all you need. I'll tell you this. I have a chiropractor uh, that is a real good golfer. He was a baseball player, professional baseball player. And uh, we played Banyans uh, oh, last spring. And he had a shot on the 10th hole par five. He was left of the green and the pin was way over on the right. And he said, well, Dan, I taught him the chipping equation last spring. And he said, uh, can I play this with a chip and equation? I said, well, yeah, why not? And he said, well, it's a long way. I said, well, how far is it? He said, I shot it with my range finder. It was 48 yards. So I said, well, all right, what's the formula there? Well, okay, it's a spot. And then the spot was on the green, uh, just a couple of steps on the green. But it was on the green, and he was, he was a good, good distance back, you know, 10 yards or so back from the green. So he said, do I play this the same way as a chipping equation? I said, sure you do. So he chipped it. Hit it one time. He hit one ball. Uh, he chipped it. It landed very close. It fan, he landed right on the spot because I put a little piece of a leaf there. So it starts rolling now, and it rolls and it rolls and it was. It had a couple of whoop de doos and took the last one come down straight and it stopped two feet from the hole at 48 yards. Now, if I'd have given him a lob wedge, I wouldn't have bet very much money he'd have gotten it within 15, 20 feet of the hole. It was an unbelievable shot, but it just shows the versatility and how you can play balls on the ground with a much higher level of consistency. The next question is, if you're landing on the green, wouldn't there be a multitude of loft slash club options to get your desired rollout? Uh, no, 
Um, you know, if you wanted to have a formula for every club, I suppose you might work out, work that out, but, but that's no good. That's too complicated for people. I wanted to have it very simple, two clubs and two formulas. And, and I promise you, you can play every single shot except going over something. You can't go over a bunker, of course. But when you have a clear path to that flag, even from 48 yards, unless you're in three or four inch grass and the ball won't roll through thick grass like that. But if you have fairway or light rough, you can calculate with those two clubs and the two simple formulas, the place to land the ball and the, and the landing spot is close to you. The landing spot is only four, five, six, seven, maybe eight steps on the outside for a very long shot uh, with those two clubs perfectly. Anything else that you can offer up in terms of how the equation works that you're willing to share with us today? Well, I think that gives that gives you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a good general idea of how this works um, and how accurate it can be. And uh, you know, the rest is uh, is putting players in unusual situations, and uh, which I do in my sessions and uh, show them, excuse me, show them shots that they would never have ever before played with one of those two clubs on the ground. And the rollout is just amazing. And as they see the balls roll up by the hole, they just, you know, they just can't, uh, they can't believe that, that, that they pulled it off. There are obviously many golfers who are not particularly good at reading greens. In your experience, has there been a significant difference in the efficiency of the chipping equation between those who can read greens well and those that can't? Good question. Uh, you know, we really don't delve into reading. You're right. Uh, you know, obviously, Aimpoint came along and gave us uh, some way to kind of calculate uh, uh, the slope of the green by uh, training our feet to read the degrees of slope. Uh, I don't see very many amateur golfers, club golfers using that system, uh, I'd have to say. But it is effective. You know, Adam Scott has used it forever on the tour and some other guys as well. Uh, but the, no, the chipping equation really is, is uh, it is like a putt once it lands on the green. That's exactly right. Uh, but it would be read basically the same as if you read a putt once it gets on the green. I, I will say one other thing about maybe reading the green in that regard. One of the things that is good about the chipping equation, very good, is that there is no spin on the ball once it makes the first bounce. All the spin comes off with the first bounce. So it's a pure roll un once it gets on the green, unlike a, a lofted club that has sometimes has spin, sometimes doesn't have the spin that you want and you don't know, but you never have a shot that's checking up on you. It's always a pure roll because of the horizontal momentum. Horizontal momentum with the uh, those two clubs, eight and the pitching wedge, comes off without any backspin. So with with after that first bounce, it's rolling like a putt, which so you don't have to calculate anyway for the backspin. Of course, you don't have any way to calculate the backspin anyway. That's part of why the lob wedges are inconsistent. You don't know if you're going to get backspin or not. You don't know how much backspin you're going to get. So you're just at the mercy of the contact that you make with those lofted clubs. And of course, we know from science and track man that that contact is inconsistent. What if you miss hit it with a pitching wedge or the eight iron? Jackie, that's the beauty of the chipping equation. Another one of the pluses is that it, because of horizontal momentum, even if you don't hit it on the sweet spot, you hit it any place except on the hosel, it is going toward the target and it's low and it's got momentum. So it still rolls up. People all the time tell me, Danny, I didn't hit that one solid. And you can hear it, you know, you instructors, you know, you can hear the quality of the strike and you hear one that's thin or you hear one that's on the high side of the blade and you look up and the ball still is rolling up to the hole and finishes three or four feet away. 
it's just amazing what horizontal momentum will will do to help your players. And back back to an earlier question, um, just wanted to clarify. I think as that's what the question alludes to is, are, do you see a difference in, in great putters who take on this versus those who maybe aren't a great putter but take on this? Is there a difference in the way they're able to perform? No, that's hey, Danny, a use me as an example. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, that's right. The, well, the, the closer you chip it to the hole, the better you're known as a great putter, you know, right? Uh, you know, we don't, we don't uh, honestly get into the, uh, uh, to read, reading the putt. And, of course, I don't really know if they're a great putter when they come to my, to, to, to my sessions. Uh, but of course, you can tell pretty quickly if they're a better chip, chipper or not. But um, I, I don't, I don't really know if they're great putters or not. Would it help their putting? Um, you know, I think the, uh, I think the putting would would help their chipping because they can read the putts. They'll know exactly where to play the shots, and maybe somehow the chipping equation helps their putting because the ball is rolling like a putt on the green and they can see it, it, it roll. I did have a very interesting fellow uh, a few weeks ago who came and I always have the, the people make a few chips and I kind of have a look what, where they are. And this fellow said, uh, I said, uh, you know, Robert, would you make a, make a few chips here? And he said, well, he says, I can't hit the ball. And I thought to myself, what, what does he mean? I, I said, what do you mean you can't? He says, well, I, I just get nervous and, and I hit the ground behind the ball every time. I, I can't hit the ball. So I said, all right, I, here's a little drill I'm going to give you. You know, I'm going to put a ball down here and um, I want you to close your eyes. And I'm sure you guys or gals have done this too. And so he got to where he could make a stroke. And, and so uh, we put the ball there. And, and I am not kidding you. This gentleman... Uh, was in good physical condition, he, but he was six, I think he was 72 or three. He started hitting chips and he was just beside himself. He said, I've never chipped the ball in my life like this up by the hole. He said, I, I just can't believe it. And, you know, again, it's not because I'm any great chipper. It's, it's because the system works. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, he left about as happy. And he sent me several texts about his chipping that he's working on it. It's going so good and he's so happy about it. So, so I'm happy when he's happy. Can you talk a little bit about maybe the variables that obviously golf's played in um, in consistent weather and in imperfect conditions? Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about how that affects this equation? Let's just say wind or rain, sure. uh, slower greens, faster greens, et cetera, or different grass. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, it stands to reason. The, the higher the ball goes in the air, the more the wind is going to affect it. The closer you can keep the ball on the ground, uh, like a putt, a putt has the least amount of effect of the wind or or rain or such. So, so again, horizontal momentum is the golfer's friend. It will traverse through all kinds of topography, and with a formula to calculate where to land it and modifications, uh, it's just amazing uh, that the ball will go where you intend it to go. It's just amazing. I've had many situations. Uh, I was up on Long Island a couple of summers ago and, and played with a couple uh, before this, the uh, session started. And there was a huge false front on a green. And I had spun a ball back off of that down. I mean, it was probably eight or nine feet tall up to the green. And so my ball came back down. It was pretty close to the base there. And so the two, the couple who knew were uh, that uh, my wife and I were there to teach the chipping equation system. And so they came over and they say, we want to see what you do on this shot. Uh, so I stepped it off. It was a short distance. I think it was only 12 steps. So I found my spot. I made a modification, which was up the hill. It was about three quarters up the false front. I chipped it with my pitching wedge because it was uh, the right distance. Landed there, popped up over the top and rolled up about, honestly, about a foot and a half short of the hole. And the fella said, that is unbelievable. We have played here for years and we have never, ever seen someone chip a ball close to the hole from down there. Unbelievable. And then, Danny, we have a, we have a couple more here from the yeah. crowd. So um, the first is many tour players chip with a strong grip. Do you square or weaken your grip? Really, neither one. Uh, 
I'd say is probably a little strong because you have the face of the club. You always want that square. You don't really want any release. So uh, the club, I just have a normal grip, light grip pressure. Part of the setup is very precise, not difficult. Uh, the ball position, the weight distribution, the shaft lean, uh, how you impart the energy to the ball is all very uh, precise, not, not difficult. It's just precise. And I don't find, I, I can say in four years, I haven't seen one person come to my sessions that has the setup that they need to have to be a great chipper. Ball's not in the right position, weight distribution. So it's not difficult. It's just that nobody does it. The ball moves all around in their stance. Their weight moves all around. You know, they don't, they just don't set up because they don't know. They've never, they've never learned um, how to really be a great chipper and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the key elements of it. Well, speaking of setup, I mean, there are going to be times where the proper landing spot will be nearer to the golfer than what the eight iron or pitching wedge may require. In that scenario, do you ask students to adjust their ball position, hand placement, loft, et cetera, or does another club become an option like a hybrid or a five iron or something lower lofted? If I'm correct, the first part was that you may change the landing spot. Uh, but the landing spot doesn't change from the formula. It's right. always the same. You make a modification, but there's no need for another club. Your modification takes care of whatever the terrain and the length is telling you it needs. So the two clubs will cover everything. I know for sure everything up to 48 yards yeah. because the eight iron worked on that shot perfectly. So the, the landing spot changes, the setup, the technique, the ball position, everything else stays the same all the time. Again, let's make it simple for people. It doesn't have to be difficult. Landing the first bounce on the green is not always part of the equation. That's a question. Okay. I would think, especially with skilled players, that landing the ball on the green would be would be for like the first option, then decide loft to carry on the green to give desired rollout. Okay. Um, the first part of that again, Jackie, just tell yeah. me. Yeah, so landing the first bounce on the green is not always part of the equation. It's always part of the equation. Landing on the green, it, it's always part of the equation. It may not be, it may not be the exact spot, it, 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 in particularly in short side situations. Right. Okay, so yes, it does. It, it that's always your calculation. That's what you'd like to do, but obviously in short side situations, you're not going to be able to do that. So you, but you still always pick your basic landing spot first. Get your distance. You get your basic landing spot, and then you make a modification if your landing spot uh, to, to whatever the terrain and the distance tells you. So there are often times when you have a short side situation. In fact, that's what a short side situation is. You have to land it unless you're going to take a lofted club. And unless you are in heavy rough that the ball will just not tra uh, traverse, you can play the ball on the ground with fairway, with light rough. You can play the ball. It's amazing with horizontal momentum. It's amazing how the ball will traverse through stuff that you think, there's no way the ball's going to roll through this. I always take people at uh, uh, one of the places I teach, Indian Springs, and uh, and even at uh, Fountains, and there's a great space where there's some just some really nasty-looking light rough. And you look at that and you say, there's no way a ball will go through this. So we'll step off a short side situation where the pin is only maybe three or four steps on the green, and we'll go back. We'll get our basic spot. We'll add a step or two, uh, depending. Uh, on the thickness of the grass and put a tee there. And when they chip that ball on that tee and it bounces through there and trickles on the green down by the hole two or three feet, it, it's just, it just stops them in their tracks. And even when they don't hit the ball solidly because of horizontal momentum, the ball rolls on up there somewhere reasonably close, maybe eight feet or six feet or even 10 feet. But that's a lot better than taking that lob wedge and duffing it up there, you know, two or three steps. And now you've essentially got the same shot over again. And now if you don't get it up and down, you got a double bogey, you're disgusted, it ruins your round. 
play it on the ground with the chipping equation and see the beauty of how these shots will turn out. Hey, Danny, this is Bob. Can I make hey, one more comment before I bow out? Sure. Uh, about two or three years, you know, we talked about uh, Coach Watts and his experience with his players. We talked about me. I brought up about the Masters, but there's one other that I would like to uh, bring up to everyone, if it's okay, real quick. You and I were watching a tournament two or three years ago, and the player uh, was uh, Patrick Reed. And he came up either the 17th or 18th hole. He had about 65 feet. The second shot came up well short of the pin. And the, one of the announcers was Nick Faldo. And when Patrick Reed pulled out a lob wedge to hit the shot, Nick Faldo immediately, quote unquote, said, oh, no, that is not the right uh, selection for this shot. He should be getting this ball on the green and having it roll out. Well, don't you think Patrick Reed's shot comes up six, eight feet short? He doesn't make the putt, loses an unbelievable amount of money. And uh, there's another lesson there, Danny. So with that being said, uh, I've really been blessed to be on this call. And Danny, thank you for all of the help that you've been uh, to me, all of my friends back in Lake Placid who can't wait to see you this summer. So thank everybody. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Jackie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, you know, it was it's, it was interesting uh, watching Scotty Scheffler chip at the Masters and how unbelievable he was with those shots. I mean, the last round that knocks it over the first green and chips that thing back. But it looked like he was using a fairly lofted club, but it looked like he really had it hooded down. So it, my guess, it was probably not much over a pitching wedge. Uh, now, you know, Scotty Scheffler is pretty talented. Uh, not all golfers have the kind of talent to do that. So I say with the pitching wedge, uh, get that, uh, get that club and, and your eight. And, uh, but you've got to have the right setup. And, and, and that's the part, uh, that is very important. And it's the part that nobody is set up. I don't see any players set up with the right set up to chip, uh, certainly for the chipping equation. Um, and and uh, so it doesn't work without that. You have to have the right setup to put the right. The, the, the track man uh, study sh said that the, the arc of the pitching wedge chip is 26 inches off the ground, and the arc of the eight is 18 inches off the ground. That's pretty low. That's pretty low. But that's what you have to have to get the, the rollout for the formulas. And, one, and it's not complicated. Once you have it and once you can feel it and you, and you have the setup, and, and you know, that's, what I, that's what I would like to, to come and, and uh, uh, meet you at your club and uh, meet your members and your players and, and teach them this system. And then, and then you've got it and you guys uh, and ladies uh, can, can, can continue to work with them. And think about your juniors who have a competitive edge with the chipping equation as they try to compete and, uh, and move up in the ranks. If they are a great chipper, they're going to have an advantage over their competition. Danny, how, how can they contact you to, to set something up? Um, uh, my email and our email, uh, my uh, tech person, uh, on my website, uh, www.dannyedwardsgolf.com. You can go on there and uh, see a couple of the other videos if you like, and just uh, email me there at uh, my email address is greenfixgolf, E R E E N fix, F I X golf at gmail.com. And you can leave messages on the website also there at, at dannyedwardsgolf.com. And uh, um, uh, Look for some dates that work good for you and your club, uh, and uh, uh, give give me a, a ring and uh, or a a text, uh, a message, and uh, and we'll get uh, a date set up for you. I like to do small groups, six people, three times a day uh, for an hour and a half. Uh, can do four a day. Uh, I like to have small groups so I can really spend a lot of time with each person. 
Uh, and I guarantee you we'll have a great time. We'll just have a great time. And we, we've had somebody, not sure if you have an answer for us, but we've had somebody ask how much a session would cost. Yeah, the sessions for the adults are 135 and for the juniors are 95. Uh, and that's for the hour and a half session. And, uh, and, and you know, you, you all know this as instructors. This is the start of a journey. This is not, you know, you don't go and get one lesson and you got the shot. You got everything. This is a journey. And this is the start of the journey, not a destination. So you're going to have them coming back to you after they learn the chipping equation and, and getting a refresher here and there, because it's just, it's just the way golf is. And you know that better than anybody. Uh, this is a process. And so I like to, you know, my students, I encourage them to come back for a second and a third time. And if they really want to learn it, that's what they need to do. But they will see immediately, as, as Craig said, they'll see the results immediately. And, but, you know, people forget, they'll forget 25 or 30 percent of what they learned after a few, after a month or two. And and uh, but I, 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 I really look forward to hopefully get a chance to come and, and work with you all. Well, also, Danny, I don't think we have any more questions that have come through. Um, is, it, is there right. anything else that you, you'd like to say in closing oh, here? Well, just uh, thank you for the time. Uh, my hat is off to you, teaching professionals and club professionals. Uh, one of my great friends was Art Proctor Sr. in Oklahoma. I grew up in a town, didn't have a golf course. So Art was my was my PGA pro, and he's a wonderful man. And uh, we just went into the uh, Oklahoma Hall of Fame induction together in October, along with my brother. And and I have, I have a great uh, soft spot in my heart for the PGA golf professionals. Well, thank you for spending your morning with us, Danny. We appreciate, um, you know, the insight into the chipping equation. And, and thank hopefully, you. Uh, hopefully we all become better chippers as a result of it. All right. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> all right.